Hi everyone, David Maley here. Today it's Saturday. It's a wonderful day, and we're going to do some K-means clustering. So we're going to—I'm going to show you how to do customer or a product or whatever segmentation you want to do through clustering. And it's going to be a three-video, three-part process because there's too much to put in one video. This would be a very long video if I put it all in one. So it's going to be in three parts. And the first part, I'm going to show you how to determine the optimal number of clusters. This is actually a little bit confusing, but if you follow along, I'll show you and walk you exactly through how I do it. And at the end product, at the end of all three videos, you're going to make a wonderful graph, just like or map, just like this, where you're going to have your uh, data broken out into clusters. You're going to be able to represent them on a actual Google map, just like this. And then I'm also going to show you how to do it with a second variable in there. So in this case, I've got sales amount. So not only do I have the dots plotted or the clusters plotted on here, but I also have them by the sales amount. So a small sales amount and a large sales amount. I could do this with transactional data. I could do it with other various things, and I'll show you how to do that. But today, we're just going to go through the first part, which is determining the optimal number of clusters. Okay, so let me pull this screen over here so you can see all the code. And let me pull this screen down over here. So what we're starting with today right here is we need to install these uh, libraries right here. If you do not have any of these, you've got ggmap, tidyverse, deployer, openxlsx, nvc lust, facto extra, and read excel. If you do not have these, just use this install.packages right here and put it in there. Most people don't have nvc lust installed, so go through that and install them. Next, I'm using this data set, TKD Sales for Region 4. It's like the Kentucky, Tennessee, maybe a little bit of Ohio area. And if I show you that data, basically this is what it is right here. So it's July sales for that region, and it's got all the cities right here, store numbers here, their sales, transactions, and units for TKD. TKD, as most people would know, is Taekwondo. Okay, so that would be Taekwondo, dojos, things like that. So now let's go back. Here we are. We pull in the data set right here. Okay, and I put it in this vector called test data six. Okay, this would be your local users to your uh, desktop or wherever you and you have your file located. Okay, if you don't know where your file is located, right click on it, hit file and properties, and it'll tell you uh, what your actual address full URL is that you need to uh, connect to it. Okay, next. Uh, or the full address. What we're going to do right down here is once we have that loaded in, we need to set the seeds. So you could set the seeds from 1 to 20 to 200. I've seen people use 283. Doesn't really matter. Just stick around 20 and you'll be fine. Then what we got to do is we got to take that data that we brought in here in this vector. It's a data frame right now. It needs to be a matrix. A matrix is a numerical table and it's not the same as a data frame. If you have a data frame and you go through this you will get error after error after error and it won't work okay so this line right here is very important it's where we put data dot matrix it's a function that takes your data frame and turns it into a matrix then the next row is equally as important we will have NAs NAs or you know nulls and uh, unknown whatever it is you want to get rid of those so we're going to omit them and we're going to scale the data to make it more representative. So what we do is we first have this 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 thing right here that we used is put in here. So actually here it just displays what we're doing. Let me make it so it stops doing that. So this right here displays what we're doing, but we're actually going to put that same code in right here and it's inside of this na.omit function. And then we're going to scale it. So this is the exact code you want right here. We're going to put it into a new container called test1. Okay, so that's our matrix now in test1. If you want to see it, you hit head and test data 6 or head and test1 to see what it looks like. Head test data 6 will show you this, the top, you know, a couple of rows of that, six rows or something like that. And same thing with test1. Now what we're doing, this one's a little bit funky, but... What we're going to do is this long line of code right here. And what we're going to do is there's a function here where we're going to determine the seeds and the NC value. And what we're going to do is just like this, just type in the code exactly like this. And it goes through a loop where it's going to set the seed. And what it's going to do is it's going to do a k-means test or k-means on this 
uh, test one that we created right here within the sum of squares. Now what that does, it's a highly reliable way of looking at different cluster amounts. Okay, And then what it's going to do, it's going to plot it right here. You can see this and it'll have the uh, it labeled to number of clusters and within groups some of the squares. That may not make a lot of sense. Just copy this and paste it in and I'll show you. Uh, so what we're doing here then is you do this WSS plot and what this does is it's actually going to create the actual plot for that. So let's make sure we have this data in. Let me show you. So let's see, do we have test data six in here? Let's go up here real quick. Yes, we do. We have it right there. So this is going to show in here. So what I want to do is after that's done, we could actually just do this once that's done and hit control and enter. Give it a second. There it is. Boom. And we can bring this bigger this way and this is the first original sum of squares plot. How this works is you look for the elbow and it's not necessarily this is not the elbow this is not the elbow. The elbow is right before it goes flat almost so it would be this one would be your greatest elbow right here which is at four and this one would be your next greatest at five and maybe possibly at three and then from there you look at other areas where it goes back up or something like that but you your biggest one is right here and you don't want to go and look at like 20 clusters you look at 20 clusters it's very hard to differ you could but in most data sets you're not going to want to look at 20 clusters if you have a humongous amount of data then you might want to do that but you're going to look at four by that one next so we've done that next I've got three things right down here and remember we brought in that NBC lust up here this uh, package right here, this library right there. Okay, I want to use that because I don't want to just use one test or one way of looking at this. So what I've got right below here is I've got three different ways through the NBC Lust. You can see so you can see right here, NBC Lust is used in each one of these. So it's fviz underscore NBC Lust. I don't worry, I didn't name this. Somebody else did that created this package on the test one, which is right here. This data matrix that we have. K means method. So this one's going to look basically the same, and this is because this is a within sum of squares. Okay. So if I take that one and I run that one, watch. Same thing as we saw earlier, but this one, what it does is it actually puts an intercept that we've put in there for four. So you can see right there, this is the end of before it goes almost flat there, and that's the optimal by the the within sum of squares. Within sum of squares is one of the most highly used ways of determining the optimal number of clusters. Almost every data science person uses that as one of their top uh, methods. So you want to put more weight to this one than the ones I'm going to show you next. So now I've got two more here. We've got gap stat and silhouette. These are also used, but they're more of like a, just to make sure you're within the range. Okay. So if I look at this one, it's thinking, there it goes, and boom, there it is. So by gap stat, it's telling me two, but it's also telling me a four. Okay, so two, four are your primary ones here. Um, you what you want to do is look at where it goes up versus down. So right here, here, and maybe this one. But regardless, you got two, and then followed by four. Next one. I mean, there's a better explanation you can get for these things if you want. This is quick, dirty, just to get you going and rocking on making clusters, okay? That's the whole purpose of things, to get you up and running with this. Here's another one. This is the silhouette test. Silhouette test has them ranked from highest to lowest. So your best one is, according to this one, is two, followed by three, and four, okay? Do you notice how four comes up in all these? So four is in the higher weighted ones, these guys, okay? So if I take this again, or the other one, it doesn't matter, and I put this one up, there's my four again. So I would weight the within sum of squares at 80% and the other two at the other 20%. And when you look at that, that's telling you four is still showing in this one and it's still showing in this one. So it's not as the number one choice, but it's the number three or number four choice in those two. And it's number one in these. So I would definitely go with four. So what we've done right there is shown you how to go and determine the optimal number of clusters very quickly, very easily. The code is right here for you to do this. Again, what you do is you load in your data set, you uh, pick your data in here, bring it in, put it into a data matrix, pick the set seeds for, in this case, 20, 
Uh, and then down here for the plot, it's got a seed of 123. And um, what we're doing is you're just basically doing a plot of the uh, sum of squares. So you can copy this code as is. The only things are going to change in this code is the data frame. See where it says test one? You could have that called whatever you want your data frame to be. And there's a couple locations in here where you'll see that test one resides. And you just need to go and change that out for your, uh, you see right here, for your own data set. Okay, it's in there a couple times. And that'll show you the, the original graph that we showed. And then these three through the NBC Lust package will show you the optimal number of clusters. It's not 100%. It's like forecasting. You're not going to be at 100%. But with this, you have a very accurate way of determining, okay, four is a really good number to go with. Then followed closely by, well, not necessarily close, but yeah, sort of, by three and two. But your best bet's going to be four. And that way we can back it up. So when you're doing a data science project and you're trying to show people, okay, this is why we used uh, four a set of four for our K value for clusters, because we did this and then we did these three different methods four different methods on it and showed that four is the optimal number of clusters in the next video I'm going to show you how to do the actual k-means analysis and then in the third part we're actually going to go and graph it like I showed you earlier map it and uh, show you where your uh, your clusters are and you can go and use different variables to try and pull different insights from that data. It's really cool once you put that all together in a package and then you, you can use um, various other packages to make it presentable um, and then give that to your, uh, your requesters, your audience, your director, your uh, VPs, whomever, to show them this is a whole breakdown of clustering for this data. That's, clustering is a very important part of data science projects to determine the original cluster size and pull further insights from that data. So I hope you found this interesting. Please be sure to stay tuned and watch the next video that, I have, that I'm building that has, and it'll show you and walk you through the actual k-means analysis and the end ones. You can put it and wrap it all together and show a really cool uh, map of your cluster data and your clusters and the variables and everything. It's really cool. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and have a great day.